on the Thursday afternoon that I came in here into St. John's and felt filled with the love and the light of God. I went up to the cathedral immediately afterwards as a confused individual not knowing what was happening in my life and I was asked there in the cathedral at Coyle Evensong was I thinking of going for ordination. I wasn't ordained for another 30 years, I was 48 when I was ordained and my wife said to me on the morning that I was being ordained I knew this moment was going to come and that calling has been there since you were a 19 year old and that's very true and I suppose uh, what I have done is answered the call that came to me here in this chapel in St. John's almost a generation earlier I thought I was going to be a worker priest I thought I was going to remain a journalist that my explaining the world and humanity to a group of readers was an appropriate way of being a priest in the world today. One of my friends and colleagues who was ordained an Anglican priest around the same time as me, I had asked him what was the difference between being a journalist and being a priest and he said that the same thing were about comforting the afflicted and afflicting the comfortable. And I've never forgotten that. Um, being a priest for me, it's not a status or a career ambition or a fulfillment of some um, wish fulfillment or a job title that I would have liked to have had. The overarching story for Christians must be what Christ says. There are two commandments, to love God and to love one another. How does that work in the world? How does it work in a secular world? Well, if the world is working hard at getting 50% of that right, loving one another, uh, I think 50% uh, is a pass mark in any university degree course. I'm very happy with that. And the other 50% gives a sacramental expression of that. When people love one another, it becomes natural to want to celebrate that to hear good stories about that, to join together in a meal around that, to find that the ultimate source for that is beyond anything that serves my self-interest. Um, God shapes that. And I think that anybody who, uh, in the name of Christianity, in the names of nationalism or exclusivism or misogyny or homophobia or xenophobia or Islamophobia, says that they're doing it in the name of Christianity, they're getting both of those commandments wrong. And so, um, if something gets in the way of those two commandments, some is, someone is misinterpreting the law and the prophets as Jesus saw them, it becomes natural for me to want to invite people into the kingdom of God through the church. And when the church sets up barriers to people coming into the kingdom of God, they start finding ways around the church. Wouldn't it just be easier to open the doors and invite people in? Uh, because when we stop inviting people in, Jesus goes out and finds them.